Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our Transvala run here. The date should be a little bit earlier than when we ended on because I forgot to save, so we're running off of an autosave. Uh, but we are continuing as our, you know, mighty, mighty gold only nation, basically. Uh, if you take a look at how much revenue we're getting, you know, from minting versus everything else, it's almost all of our economy at this point. Uh, very important to note is that we are getting way, way more also on the back of our company, which is giving extra throughput. Uh, not only, you know, to the minting, and it's also giving a minting bonus, but the throughput is also applying, you know, to our actual output bonus here. And so this is bolstering the side of our economy that doesn't get accounted into minting, uh, which is allowing the weekly balance here to be really positive, which is uh, causing, you know, these guys to spend a lot more on various things. Although we're not really selling those things at this juncture, I guess we're selling a little bit of food. Um, but this is, our economy is just off the back of that. And this episode, I think what's gonna happen is two things are gonna happen. First of all, we're going to get water tube boiler and then we're going to pop off because this will basically plus 50% the output of all the gold mines. And then I think we might even push a little bit for dynamite. And so I think this episode is going to be really us kind of sinking into getting the rest of our gold kind of exploited or trying to at least get a majority of it exploded, uh, exploded. Well, with the dynamite, it will be, uh, exploited. Um, and then, uh, you know, once these become gold mines, uh, we discover more gold here in Transvaal. This will be also really good, but also I think we have to push uh, the universities much, much higher than we otherwise would because of discrimination. And so, you know, it's the classic combo everyone knows, uh, gold and paper, golden universities. And so this is probably what we'll be mainly going for to today. Uh, as far as expansion goes, I think we'll just be kind of hanging out in Ethiopia. It's really not the best place to expand, uh, but we're really not ready for overseas expansion yet. Uh, we only have a one frigate. We have a few more on the way. Um, they're under recruitment currently. We probably, I thought we had built up the second level one but we hadn't and so they're all in the queue so we definitely want to build uh you know make it so that this one can start recruiting up but unfortunately even if it can recruit up uh this is where they're recruiting after if you take a look here all of those are discriminated pops and so us getting uh the officers you know to recruit up the admirals is going to be tough but once we get up to like level three then we'll probably start going after borneo and then we'll start getting actual good expands instead of you know expanding into ethiopia like we've been doing so we finished the second level of this naval base with the idea that hey you know the first one's probably managed to make it to 1k employment by now and then at that 1k employment if you go to 1001 pops you get access to the second level of the boats uh and when you have the second level of the boats yeah uh, you get the the full uh you know kind of elimination of the malice nope 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 we have 156 employed so this is the really really struggle bus thing is that it's very very difficult for us to expand even if we can recruit troops troops up in the capital where we have much less discrimination and by much less i mean still mostly discriminatory uh even if we could do this and we can get dutch and boer um it's not going to matter because we can't actually get enough people to actually go out after um, you know some of these places now we could try and drive migration to here and if we drove migration here then we would be able to get uh, you know some of the officers but this is not the current state of things also just wanted to note um, this is homeland for Boer which is what we accept and so this is actually pretty nice because it's homeland for Boer they will not suffer the penalty or should not if I'm uh, my understanding is correct suffer the penalty for the malaria here so uh, as we convert pops to being Boer um, this is going to be nice for us because uh, we will not have to suffer uh, any sort of malaria penalty on the Boer Pops that we are, you know, converting on over, which is uh, something that will be a little unique to Transvaal. Normally, you just lose a lot of Pops to malaria in Transvaal, but not for us. Not for us. So this is going to be tremendous for us. If we take a look here, uh, we will see that we are currently at 31k minting. If we just turn on this PM, let's see how much it changes. We're on 31k. Let's just turn it on on gold mines and see how that shifts things over. So 31k, 35k minting. So up 4k just from that one little swap alone. And we have a whole bunch of other places we can swap. Also notably, that we gain access to the water tube boiler and. Um, even if this isn't going to make us money, I think we're going to swap everything to water tube boiler in order to drive up, um, you know, in order to drive up our standard of living. Uh, because the pops that are currently employed as laborers, they'll kind of have similar SOL to peasants. It'll be a little bit better than peasants. But what we can do is we can get rid of the laborers, send them back to being peasants, and increase the overall density of pops um, that are working in. We can increase the overall 
uh, what is it, uh, average wage multiplier. So for example, this place, uh, you know, on this, it's gonna employ 500 engineers, 3,500 laborers, and 500 machinists. If we turn on water to boiler, which by the way, makes money at this uh, point, it's going to decrease the number of laborers. So a higher proportion of these will be the high wage multiplier pops. Like I think it's 1.5X uh, for the, the machinists and the engineers are like two or three or something. It's a much higher, uh, higher figure, which means they'll be getting paid more and so uh, by doing this, we are hoping, um, you know, here we can see the average annual wage, the laborers, 2.5, these guys are roughly 1.5 the laborers, and these guys are like 2.5x the laborers. And so this higher average annual wage is going to allow these pops to have a higher standard of living, and this higher standard of living will be useful for the purposes of driving migration to these places. And so we will be turning on labor-saving PMs a bit more aggressively than normal because migration is really going to fix a lot of our problems because a lot of our problems are driven by, you know, discrimination. You can see here, we have 5k pops in here. If we turn on all of these, and get more migration, then we don't have to worry about the qualifications issue because we accept some of these pops. Uh, like if we take a look and we look, these are all the pops we have, and then the stars are the ones we accept. So we have some Boer. We started the run off with like 10K, maybe it's 20K once we take free stat, but now we have 40K Boer. Um, they of course will be growing and then also converting pops. We have 30K Dutch, 18K Portuguese. Uh, we got the Irish, 16K, you know, English, 12K, Scottish, 3K. And so we're getting Australian, ooh, halo, uh, but we're getting a lot from the British market in order to, uh, you know, populate uh, these areas. And so we want to drive even more uh, because this is the main throttle. You see all of these places we have, they're trying to employ up and the throttle is they don't have enough capitalists or engineers. Uh, and so we do need some of those better pops to get them up. Now, as far as tech goes, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna detour uh, for a little bit into the society tree for pharmaceuticals which is going to allow us to get public health insurance. Notably, as far as the law passes go, we are not going to get off of religious schools, even though we'd prefer public schools, until after we've used the evangelical church to pass uh, public health insurance, because they're one of the few people who support it, and we don't want to demolish their clout. Um, as much as we've brought it down, we don't want to demolish it before we get public health insurance. And so, um, because there aren't, uh, we have a lot of the laws we want in place, I think we want to stay monarchy, because we're making such good use of the authority right now, uh, by using all of these, uh, what is it, the, these decrees, which is normally not what you do. Normally you go consumption taxes, but consumption taxes, they really wouldn't yield us very much relative to the minting. So we're playing a little bit different here. And so um, this is going to be what we are doing. So we're going to stay on monarchy for a hot minute because the authority, I, I do think the authority is pretty good for us, at least at this juncture. And this means that we don't have too many law passes we want to do. I mean, we definitely want to do prop tax, uh, but we're going to wait for the landowners to cool off a little bit and then go prop tax here. And so uh, this is why we're passing this right now and also we do really want to have this public health insurance law pass because it's going to give us plus standard of living which is going to help drive the migration and so pharmaceuticals is what we're going to go for next uh we could go for quinine for a little bit faster colonization but colonization is based on incorporated pops uh and we don't have a lot of incorporated pops so this is going to be a too big deal however dialectics is intriguing philosophy department will give us for each university which is one of the drivers of our ability to actually employ guys up it will give us 50% more qualifications since we're building so many universities kind of do like this quite a bit I think we're gonna go pharmaceuticals first I'm not sure if it's better if either one of these starts not spreading we'll swap to the other one but after this uh, pretty indiscriminate of how much of these we have remaining I think we're going to go to for dynamite and what we will do is we will research it up to the 12k uh, base cost 12.5k and then uh, we will wait for these other ones to not spread to us. We might even get it a little bit ahead of time, but we can make good use of steam donkeys for the reasons we were talking earlier, which is that they are gonna be a labor saving PM on all the mines and we are going to be mostly mines. And so we don't have a lot of wood uh, in our entire place, uh, although we would build some of the wood. We are encouraging resource industries in our main places and we are also going to have these gold mines. And so this is going to increase SOL. And so this is kind of the plan we have moving forward in regards to the tech. You know the good old university plus gold combo. It's coming alive. So the Ottomans uh, intervene when we go for Oman here, uh, but they forget to send any troops, so we just kind of run over Oman. If we didn't, uh, or if they did send a bunch of troops, I still think we would have been able to get in uh, because this is just a single state in Oman and we would be able to land. Um, and so hopefully we would have been able to get in that way. We didn't put any war goals on the Ottomans because this makes it more likely that they commit, uh, you know, resources. And so now that we've full occupied, you know, the home state of 
them on. We are going to be moving our troops back to Transvaal. And it looks like the Ottoman fleet's heading back anyways. Um, tail between their legs. Uh, and so uh, this is going to be a little bit of a nuisance though. Because the Ottomans have now rivaled us. Which is unfortunate because we had plans of... So we were having like kind of... A, we're having a hard time like declaring useful wars, right? Uh, but expanding into Persia would have been nice once we reduced on uh, Oman. So this uh, we were hoping to be able to do this. But now maybe this is not going to happen because we're not really making good use of our infamy decay overall because we're declaring a bunch of small wars and so i was thinking that maybe you know taking kerman um just straight up uh would have been pretty good and this would have given us uh you know access to sulfur as well as uh this place has a lot of unused arable land so we would have been able to siphon off you know pops um we couldn't subjugate persia because we are a lowly lowly minor power in persia if i recall correctly uh is a higher power rank than us uh and so there this is their regional power so we'd have to get at least to a major uh but subjugating persia would be excellent for us uh but this would have been at least uh you know something useful that we could have done um uh, but um okay we also are taking zanzibar from uh oman or the from oman because often it will break free and so we're just straight up annexing it uh and then we do have a little bit of this going on we're not going to side with either of those but um us annexing oman is going to help us uh to be able to get these juicy juicy you know high mappy provinces here um that have uh that are in here and also probably be able to cut off the uk a little bit better in the colonization game still colonizing really slow though because only two million incorporated pop perfect we love when the gold fields deplete we are always going to choose the better migration option we don't really care about radicalism relative to migration but this is going to give us more levels that we can build up uh you know in terms of the gold mines we are actually not going to stick these in the queue because the auto queue is very likely to build these up and instead we're going to focus on you know the things we need to focus on we're going to finish this explosives factory but then making sure we have enough infrastructure for the auto queue to build in these places we still have the auto queue bug so they will have control of 75 percent of the queue we have one gold mine in the queue uh but I imagine that uh, the the private construction queue will pick up the gold mines here, hopefully. And if it doesn't, then we'll have to build them ourselves. But this is more levels of gold mines, which is something we're about. All right, it turns out that we could declare to protectorate Persia, which is absolutely marvelous for us we built up our military a little bit for this uh we also conscripted up one level of mobile artillery from everywhere the 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 military that we built up is still coming in i suppose did we put it at the back of the queue no it's just slow to recruit up because the, the qualifications issues um but uh they're worried they are somewhat likely to back down and we did have the plan of if the ottomans joined against us which they were fairly likely to if they have an interest in the region which they very often do little surprise to not see them join considering they declared us a rival unless they decided we're not a rival anymore uh but uh we our plan was the uk is generally pretty willing to join on our side if we did something like transfer a subject and we have a whole bunch of subjects uh and we don't really care about uh, all of them so um and in fact it might even be better for us to transfer a subject here we're not going to because we're being greedy uh but like something like uh or Sangali, we don't really care too much uh, about maintaining them as a subject and in fact maybe this is better just to make this war easier on us a uh, little late in the you know a le little late in the play to be doing this but like maybe it's just like so not worth like the trouble i mean eventually there will be an economy here and we'll annex it and so and also future plays it might be useful so we'll just keep it as is uh but we are going to be able to push into here hopefully and also uh have this little bit of a landing squad we are going to put in uh you know some uh, levels of uh, conscripts on these guys. That way we can mobilize them, recruit up the conscripts, or raise the two conscripts, and then with the conscripts raised, we should be able to put in a new boyo, uh, and this new boyo, we should be able to put on, ooh, we can't put on until the lancers come on up, but once they're up high enough, we should be able to put in the, the swift advance, I forget what it's called uh, exactly, but uh, we are going to be landing this guy and trying to push this guy in this way, while our main army pushes here with the Zulu army. So, normally this would not be an event that we would uh, warrant pointing out while we're passing prop tax, uh, this giving one where we have, you know, uh, enactment chance and SOL or just more enactment chance. But we're going to actually choose the enactment chance plus SOL uh, for giving, uh, you know, on Transvaal. I think this applies to the entire country, not just the state. But this plus one SOL on low standard of living, this is going to be really good for helping to drive more migration which is going to chiefly solve you know our main problem so this was at 35 uh and uh, i forgot what the number was there but this is going to drive this up and uh, 
push-up migration attraction, which is going to allow us to keep getting more and more migrants. Um, and once these guys are here, it's important to emphasize that this is a compounding effect. You know, once these guys get here, once they migrate here, then they will be part of this population growth. And so we will probably see one of the higher, uh, you know, uh, population transvals in Freestadt, especially because uh, pops will get converted to Boer that won't, you know, kind of eat it to malaria um, uh, in this run in particular. And so this is going to be pretty nice. We will continue to also make sure that we are on labor saving PMs, uh, which will be less efficient from the perspective of adding money to the economy, um, I think, uh, relative to the peasants. Well, it would be if we had a big consumer economy, but we don't. Um, so one of the things is de-peasanting pops is really nice because it pushes up the price of your consumer goods and the, when the price of your consumer goods goes up uh, because these guys consume more uh, it makes your businesses more profitable we don't have consumer goods we have one thing and one thing only we have gold and so um, this is much less of an issue and so um, overall it's going to push up our sol which is going to you know drive the migrants very nice we get in there we also were able to put these guys on rapid advance we have recruited more of these and so once we got in there the push was a bit faster and we full get everything we want so in five years we'll be reducing their autonomy which is super nice and also we do get to have a bunch of infamy which is really nice because if you're not using your infamy decay you're losing it and this was one of the few like big chunk things we could have done and so this is going to be super good later on especially you know once we get that juicy juicy look at the migration attraction uh they have a big unused arable land modifier and so we are going to be able to make good use of that once we eventually annex them and that will probably become like kind of our industrial heart we have a really actually pretty nice line up uh you know the east african coast uh as things were also uh we are just kind of finishing up this should be our fifth university so i think if I recall correctly, the journal entry, uh, we will have a journal entry that will make dialectics cheaper as we come in here and finish pharmaceuticals, which is going to be fantastic because now we can go public, you know, health insurance. And so we can do something like this. Um, what law are we passing now? Or are we, no, okay, we're finishing up prop tax, but after prop tax, we're going to do public health insurance and then we will swap to, you know, uh, regular schools. Also, once we get this in, I think we might start actually using, uh, you know, some of this for construction. Uh, so currently we have super low tax level and uh, we're not really trying to push the taxes. If you look, man, that's such little on taxes. We're getting 1.6K and 1.4K from taxes. This is probably still not worth it for us to actually turn up the taxes. Like we could turn it up and we would generate, ho oh, ho, a little bit more money. It's really not that uh, a big driver of how much money we're getting. Look how much we're getting from investment pool transfer. We're getting like 12K from the investment pool relative we're getting 10x from our investment pool than we are from this nonsense because again one of the most efficient pms in the game this gold is a good uh, that gets sold at this price. And so we have a huge weekly balance on this on top of the minting. This is not part of the minting. Uh, and so, you know, it's just like such a large, yeah, it's just, uh, we're this having a really high balance is giving us this huge investment pool transfer as well uh, i mean like why tax pops when you can get the money for free i mean it's so passing health insurance, we get this event, health taxes. Uh, we can take it from the tax funds. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that tiny little bit we need to pay. Uh, I'm sure it's based on the you know uh, amount that they're taking and we don't really care how much they take. So we're just gonna take uh, 30, yeah, we're just gonna take however much that was. It doesn't really matter because our tax income is basically nothing. Although actually it's pretty high after we swapped. So we actually could get a decent amount of money. So if we did this, yeah, that's actually a decent chunk. Um, and it's also now that we're on prop tax, it's targeting the upper strata. So perhaps we are, will start rolling back some of this stuff and then all actually paying for some construction um, now that things have come up quite a little bit. And it also feels like we're doing pretty good on the employment. So we're going to continue to expand these construction here, which is also going to give us, you know, construction, positive construction modifiers, which are pretty good considering we're going to be building here for the most part. A uh, little bit of state construction efficiency. It's not a whole lot. Uh, it's not as much as we are getting from our edict, uh, but it is something. It's not nothing. And so this will allow us to come up a little bit. Uh, you know, we don't want to be hugely deficit spending because we're still just a minor power. So our interest rate isn't that great. Uh, but, um, you know, we're almost, we've almost cleared out kind of our deficit here or our uh, credit line here. So I think it's safe to add these construction sectors, get constructing a little bit faster. Um, the auto queue is getting access to 75% of, of our construction, which is not ideal. And so this will give us a little bit more control, allow us to build up a little bit faster. And so this should be good for us. 
this. So we pipped dialectics and this is the one that gives us the journal entry. And so we're gonna come in and we're gonna swap over all the universities we have. Normally you don't really rush this because as a proportion of the stuff you've constructed, you don't really have a lot of universities. There's some cases where you like have a lot of universities, but uh, this is gonna give us a lot more innovation, 21 more innovation. But the really juicy thing is this qualifications, especially because we just finished our first university here. And so we are hoping uh, that after this university employs up, because it's going to take a while for it to employ up, that maybe, 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 maybe we can eventually get a fleet of some kind to actually do anything that is not directly adjacent to something else we have going on. Because that's the current state of things. We've otherwise been kind of chill on the infamy because uh, there's nothing really too great for us to do. We've subjugated and reduced autonomy here in Borneo. We're going to reduce autonomy as soon as, you know, our truce is up with Persia. Only 28 months left. We're going to annex Zulu. But other than that, you know, kind of not too much going on. The UK is really starting to haul. We have such a slow colonization speed. Like, kind of considered, in order to not get this 90% penalty, kind of considered going Quinine. Uh, but, you know, the, the plus... 9xing a really small number because it's based on incorporated pops is really not all that great um we're gonna have to start incorporating soon and in fact it, it might even make more sense to like do something like "Ooh, this is not spreading to us nice um might make more sense to go central archives so we can incorporate more stuff and also increase institutions, especially because hopefully we're getting this health system in soon, so we're gonna need more bureaucracy for all this stuff. We're gonna, you know, wanna improve education. Also, maybe we keep uh, the, the evangelical church here. And the reason for this uh, is that Actually, we probably would prefer this education to this institution here. We'll get on that, but we, right now it's in our queue. But we have so much, we have so such little construction because the bug. It's a little bit rough, but thinking that we actually do kind of like this five percent company throughput bonus because it's applying to the gold, and so maybe we actually want to keep the the church around as best we can, which we can do by staying on religious schools they should not demarginalize and if we can keep them happy then we can keep that like five percent bonus which is going to be pretty nice when it's applying to you know the gold company let's actually just check what our throughput is on this gold stuff because we're encouraging resource industry and that perhaps this is uh, a little bit difficult to emphasize yeah so we're getting two percent from economies of scale 20 percent from encouraged resource and uh, 19 percent from the company throughput bonus so we're getting 40 percent throughput so this is this is pretty good for us so with the separatist movement we do get the market isolation bug which is a really annoying one none of our places here have isol uh, any sort of market access because they were getting it through zanzibar this is where the port connection took place and so so even though these places have ports, they just go to 0%, which is a very annoying bug, uh, but it's because we no longer have access to Zanzibar. However, we will be getting it back pretty quick here, but it's going to mean we just get a ton of turmoil and a ton of like loss, uh, you know, economic activity, which was a pretty big chunk of economic activity, also lost bureaucracy uh, because these places have like zero access. So this is kind of annoying, it's obnoxious. We saw it in a really big way in the Brazil run, uh, but this one's not too, too bad, but uh, just like the fact that this succession is like actually a big deal because of uh you know killing access to like the two of the five states we have that and these are the states that actually have a decent chunk of buildings because uh the place is built up quite a bit before we annex them uh it's just not ideal we are starting to get hit with some turmoil in the capital which is really really not nice um i think this is largely because of the discrimination and slavery who knew this makes people upset but this is not a modifier we're happy with. This minus 35% migration and attraction. Now, we still have quite a bit to overcome it. We have 50% uh, from greener grass campaigns. And when the intelligentsia is happy, which they we're going to try and make them happy in just a little minute by banning slavery, as it were, um, when these guys are happy, they will also be giving us plus 50% migration and attraction. So it's not like we can not do... It's not like this is like burying us, but this is also giving us a pretty hefty you know, penalty to construction. And so we're also increasing the institution of policing. Uh, so that this will kind of help this out and we're also going on education at the same time uh we have you know these government admins this is kind of all we're going to be building for a hot minute and we're annexing zulu and this is going pretty well and so um you know 
really starting to turn a corner here. We are working on Dynamite. We are not going to uh, eat the penalty for Dynamite. And so um, if we get to, once we get to 12.5K innovation, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to a different technology. Also, Mechanized Workshops coming in is going to be pretty clutch. But uh, we can make really good use of Steam Donkey. And so what we'll do is we will just research this up to 12.5K, which is the base price of it. Uh, and then uh, once we finish these other things, uh, then it will cost 12.5K instead of 21K. And what we'll do is we'll swap to Steam Donkey because Steam Donkey is going to be also really good because we are trying to use labor saving PMs pretty aggressively, especially because we're actually out of peasants in Transvaal. And so um, not only are we doing it for the reasons of uh, like, you know, improving the migration because we're improving SOL, now we actually just do need the labor. And we need it in these places because we really want to build in these places specifically. It's going to be hard for us to build in other places. And so, um, yeah, this is kind of what we've been doing. Um, did kind of get over this little thing, this... Uh, struggle bus that we were having over here uh and now everything's kind of steady except for this this isn't steady at all uh we could increase taxes here i guess okay let's start ramping up the taxes a little bit oh, dude it does like nothing look at this national revenue 78k like to 80k dude, it's so not worth it like it's still not worth it it's insane so we are going to invite an agitator we don't currently have a political movement we there's almost certainly an agitator we can invite that will want to ban slavery these guys colonial affairs this guy wants to ban slavery abolitionist intelligentsia this is going to be pretty good literary is actually incredibly good to have on a leader so if we got this guy as an eventual leader this would be super okay with us and so we just need to wait one tick or so and then he's like hey look there's a huge support for this um and so we're gonna start while we have the support of this gentleman we will start passing the law we will reform the government a little bit then we will start passing the banning of slavery and then so really really tempting to make this guy so the intelligentsia already supports the banning of slavery and the landowners don't care about the slavery thing why do you not care about the slavery thing bro why do you not care if we ban slavery Oh, they do care. They just have no clout. Okay, fair enough. Um, these guys are in government, so I don't think that they can get kicked out. Um, eventually, though, uh, this guy, this gentleman, he doesn't have literary. This guy literally has literary, and uh, the intelligentsia has way more clout than we're kind of normally used to because <laughs> we've built nothing but universities and gold. Uh, and so uh, we should have an easy time passing this. I think we maybe keep this guy as an agitator, and then after he's done agitating, after we get slavery banned, um, then maybe we make him uh, the leader, and then maybe we look to swap off of this because, uh, you know, literary is literally one of the best uh, best traits. The minus 25% infamy decay is really, really strong, and we can pass as parliamentary really easy while we have this guy Republican. Of course, this guy would be the leader. Let's take a look at this Republican guy. What do you got? You're an opium, you're a bigoted opium addict. Okay, so maybe this isn't such a good idea because this guy's actually pretty good. Um, he has experienced colonial administrator, which isn't as big a deal, but uh, the biggest thing, well, actually maybe so the thing is, is again, we get a lot of use out of our authority right now because we are using uh, like six edicts, or it might even be more than six edicts. We might be using eight. Yeah, we're using eight edicts right now. So uh, we maybe want to stay monarchy for a little while longer, but eventually we want to get off of it. And also, we would be hyper legitimate if we swapped to parliamentary. We'd be up here. We would be getting more loyalists. It'd be easier for us to maintain bonuses. And so this might be what we're doing next. But for now... For now, we're banning slavery, which should help with the turmoil problem in the capital. So we also protectorated Congo here. Uh, they just backed down without a fight, which is pretty nice because now we're going to have a basic interest there. So we can put our interest back in Senegal where we are colonizing a little bit. We're colonizing. We're really doing a whole lot of not much. But did want to point out that we did not build all these gold mines. The auto queue did kind of kick these out. And look how much money that's making. 20k from minting. On top of, you know, a 50k uh, output of goods for a 12k positive balance, which is getting reinvested into the economy. Um, if we just take a look at kind of the update of what is the power of universities and gold, uh, national revenue is 70k. Of that, 53k is minting. So we are starting to get a decent chunk from taxes. Um, you know, we are turning a little bit of a corner, but it doesn't really feel like... I mean, maybe we go for this now. We kind of do want to clear some of this out. Uh, and also, the, the idea of parliamentary republic following this law pass, uh, well, maybe, maybe this is kind of the point or zone in which we want to kind of start kicking things up. Uh, the thing is, is construction is going to be less useful to us than it might first appear. Because the places we really want to build don't really have many peasants or unemployed. 
So, um, you know, I guess we start pushing, like, some of the buildings uh, in other places, especially if we push the buildings here, we will get positive modifier from available employment. We have a little bit of it. Um, we're trying to build it up a little bit more by building, overbuilding how many, you know, light ships that we thought we could, uh, wanted. Uh, but the idea of giving, it would give us uh, available employment. So maybe we start pushing it up here. Maybe we start building in Zululand. We can't incorporate Zululand yet, which is a little bit unfortunate. I mean, we can build in these places, but these aren't very good places to build but they are where we have the peasants and so maybe we need to shift gears a little bit uh you know kind of put down so oh, this place doesn't even have logging uh you may put down some auto expands on some of the logging in particular uh, it's going to be really good maybe we could put down an auto expand on the fishing because these are going to be very good for de peasanting pops and also we don't want to go too too ham because we will have qualification problems here so um you know just a logging camp or a fishery every once in a while will be kind of a good way to boost our gdp by getting these peasants but i think we're going to conclude this episode here this episode was pretty productive we uh you know we got some very key texts um we didn't get uh dynamite yet in fact just so we don't miss it we're gonna actually swap over to steam donkey now uh that way we will uh natural spread these in the time uh before we get uh so we avoid the malice Okay, but we did get some key text. We got, uh, you know, water tube boiler, which was a big come up. We also got pharmaceuticals uh, and dialectics. Dialectics being pretty useful. Uh, we've gotten to the point where we are not worried about qualifications in the two states we are primarily building in, which is Transvaal and Freestadt. Uh, we will continue to build these places. I think that we maybe in the near future uh, want to start nuking some of these. But for the most part right now, um, we are just making so, so, so much money or uh, from gold uh, that it really doesn't make sense to come off of these edicts just yet, I don't think, but it will be in the near future. But we had this pretty big come up. We did get the universities up to level five here. I think they're like level two or three in free stat. And then also we added what or just one. And we added one university here. Uh, the idea being, and it hasn't recruited up all the way because qualifications problems are problematic. Uh, but the idea being... <laughs> In this entire episode, we've gone from, like, 200 employment to 400 employment. And we have this problem with every single coastal province we own. And so we won't be able to make a use of the Navy. But we did get the, kind of the shining jewel of Persia, uh, you know, through uh, starting with Mara because they had no guys to defend uh, land. Then we took Oman. We reduced autonomy in Oman. And then we were able to push into Persia. And so uh, we will be reducing their autonomy next episode by hook or by crook. Uh, we will be getting them. Also, we can ch we can affect their stuff. Uh, I don't think there's a special one we want to kind of go on. We could go with Surfdom. The truth hurts. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do the YouTube algorithm thing, and have a good day.